Hi everybody, Stu, AG6AG. You know, with the holidays coming and Christmas around the corner, there may be new computers in everybody's stockings this year. Odds are, if you're purchasing from a big box store or buying online and are looking at a price conscious decision, you're going to purchase it with Windows 10 Home Edition. Now, Windows 10 Home Edition with the latest updates make it difficult not to set up an online account for your login on Windows 10 Home. That said, there are some reasons to have that online account. We're going to demonstrate two different setup scenarios depending on how far you want to go with either online access or local login access to your PC. We'll cover briefly the setups for both and hopefully you'll be able to set the PC up the way that you think you need to do it. Oh, hey, and while you're here, don't forget, click on the subscribe button for me down below. I'd really appreciate it. And if you like the videos, hey, click on like. Also, you know what? Leave me a comment or two. Let me know what you think. With that, Let's get to work. Well, here we are. This is Stu, AG6AG, and this is going to be the first of two installs, as mentioned in the preamble. Uh, this is going to be the one where we just do it like a normal consumer would set up Windows 10 Home. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and dive in. When we turn on our brand new Windows 10 Home machine, this will be the screen that we see. It's going to ask me what my region is. I'm going to go ahead and say that it's the United States. Um, and it's going to ask me my keyboard layout. And for almost anyone that, um, you know, uh, is in the United States, it's going to be U.S. Now, this is interesting, too, because it asked me if I want to add a second keyboard uh, layout, which means, let's say that, uh, oh, I don't know, I'm in Japan or I'm in Taiwan, and I want to have those additional characters with the code keys available. I can go ahead and add that layout if I choose to. I'm going to just skip that. And of course, it's going to go up. It's now checking to see if it has internet connectivity and all sorts of other fun things and uh, testing some additional stuff. Um, one of the more interesting things that came out with the 2004 version of Windows 10 Home is it no longer has a bypass that allows you not to use an online account if it sees the network. In other words, if it's able to see the internet, it wants to force you to use an online account. This has to be a Microsoft account. A great example is that, uh, oh, <laughs> while we're moving forward, Windows 10 license agreement, I encourage you to read through this. Um, you know, I probably read it a couple times. Real issue is if you don't agree, then you can't continue, so you can't use Windows. That's their, their step out. Um, so makes it kind of difficult if you don't agree. So now it doesn't give me any choices, okay? It used to be that I could hit next and it would say, oh, you know, create a local account, but you notice that it's not allowing me to do that anymore. There's no place for me to create a local account in this direction. Even if I click learn more, it just basically says with Windows Home, I have to use an online account since I'm on the internet. Well, that's not necessarily true. Uh, there's a lot of creative things you can do uh, to avoid that online account. But for now, let's go ahead, since we're doing the end user consumer install here, let's go ahead and use a Microsoft online account. And by the way, it can't be a business account if you're setting up home. So in other words, if you have a uh, email address from like 365 Exchange or something like that for your company, you cannot use that same address. It wants a personal address. Now, of course, you can link them in the back end, but that's beyond the scope of this. Uh, I've created a uh, special account here just for this install. And let's see here. There we 
go. Now, of course, you have the opportunity. You can create your own account here, but for the most part, uh, you might be better off just going in and creating it through Outlook.com. Uh, but, you know, your mileage may vary, and you may already have an account. You may have already gone through this ritual, and uh, the only reason that you're watching this is to see the next install. Uh, but, uh, like I said, I want to get this out of the way for everybody that's involved. Anyway, so we're waiting for it to authenticate. Now, it is going to force me to create a PIN number as well, which is a method for me to be able to access the PC if it's offline. And uh, you definitely want to do that. You know, you don't want to forget to do that. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and put in a pin. And this pin is going to be specific for this machine. And it's basically a second method of access. Now, look at all this great stuff. Online speech recognition, location, Find my device, diagnostic data, tailored experience, ink, uh, inking and typing, uh, advertising IDs, and on and on and on. This is all stuff that has to do with your privacy settings, okay? Uh, read each and every one of them. My typical install, I turn all this off. Um, they don't need to know my location. They don't need to know, uh, you know, where... Uh, what I'm doing with ink and typing. I don't need custom uh, saved setups for that, uh, that uh, you know they keep a copy of. That's not within the realm. But for what we're doing on this install, we're just gonna leave the defaults. And we'll go ahead and accept that. Now, it wants to customize my device, right? Okay, select how you plan to use the device. Schoolwork, entertainment, uh, I can skip this, but let's go ahead and we'll, uh, oh, let's select, uh, I don't know. Uh, let's say we're going to use it for some gaming, maybe a little bit of creative, all that good stuff. Um, and of course, uh, you know, uh, for entertainment. All right, let's go ahead and accept that. Now. It wants, uh, it wants to link up with my phone, and I don't think I want it to do that, so I'm just going to say do later. It's probably, as always, going to nag me about it, uh, and hopefully it has a thing, don't ask me again, but we'll see. And this is also interesting, too. Back up your files on OneDrive, right? Use uh, your device... Uh, with peace of mind, your desktop documents, pictures, and folders, devices will be backed up on OneDrive, so they're protected and available on any device anywhere. So this is this is basically document sharing, which which means that everything that you save on this, all your settings, everything that you save on this computer, documents, spreadsheets, all that stuff will be saved up to OneDrive. We'll go ahead and say next. What the heck? We'll see what happens. Now, this is going to allow me to do a demo of 365. I'm going to say no thanks on this. It also has an option for a product key if you already own 365. Um, so, yeah, why not? Discover your favorite games. Eh, no, nah, no thank you. Uh, now, Cortina, or Cortina, Cortina, uh, is basically their... Um, Cortana, I'm sorry, I had to get that out right. Cortana is basically their online help thing. You know, they you can talk to it, it will talk back to you just like your mate. <laughs> so for me, it's typically not something I'd set up, but the default is accept. And uh, let's go ahead and we'll go ahead and let it do it just for uh, funsies and see how that strives out. And I believe, if I'm correct, that's it. Now, 
fairly straightforward, not difficult. Let's talk about what we've done, though. We've given Microsoft access to all of our data. We've used an online account that they can send email to um, when they want to try to market something to us. Uh, we may be in a situation where, since we're sharing our files and documents across all our platforms by selecting the OneDrive stuff, we may be in a situation where we run out of space on OneDrive, and in order to recover from it, we have to spend money and purchase more space on OneDrive. Okay, uh, I had that happen to a very good friend of mine. And, of course, you know, he selected yes on everything. He took the defaults. He thought it would be just fine. Um, you know, sometimes that works. Sometimes that doesn't. So what we're going to do next after this comes up and uh, everything else so you can see the desktop, I am going to go ahead and end this video, start a new one back where we started out with it not connected to the Internet, and show you the different experience and how you can set this up to be a localized system for you. So with that, see you in a minute. Okay, well, on to the second install. So the only thing that we've done in preparation of this install is we've made sure that there are no network cables connected to it and the wireless interface is off. So it's not going to make an attempt to connect to the internet in any way. And this in the beginning is pretty much the same thing. I mean, US, US keyboard, I'm not gonna add a layout. And now it's digging around looking for the network. So now it says, hey, to finish setup, you'll need to connect to the internet. And it says, my ethernet isn't connected. And if my wireless was on, it would have a whole list of wireless networks I could connect to. If I click down here, I don't have the internet. It's going to say, hey, you're going to miss out on all this stuff. You're going to miss out on advanced security and privacy, right? Uh, free access to Office Online, Outlook, Skype, and more. Oh, my God. And you're not going to be able to unlock the best features of Windows. So that's okay, all right? I do not want this machine to be dependent at all on a connection to the Internet. I want to make sure when the Internet's out, I can use the machine, I can access all my documents. There's no question about what's going on, okay? So I'm going to continue with what they consider a limited setup. I personally consider this an optimum setup, but that's me. Uh, and if you're setting this up, again, for emergency services for amateur radio, I strongly recommend you do it this way. So... I'm going to go ahead and just, uh, I'm going to go ahead and just type in here who's going to use the PC, and I'm just going to say amateur. Uh, oh, let's see. How about operator? That'll work. And for the password, I'll just make something up. course I'm going to need to remember it <laughs> and it's going to ask me security questions so the first one what was your first pet's name I'm going to just put dog what was uh, what city you were born I was born here and then of course uh, your childhood nick, uh, nickname uh, we'll just make it operator I have never, in the course of trying to get into a machine, used any of those security questions. Uh, so, for the most part, they're kind of, kind of bogus. Now, you remember these questions online. So all this, I am going to turn all of this off. Again. I don't want Microsoft to have any more information than it absolutely has to have. And to be honest with you, I don't want Microsoft's help for daily operation of the PC. 
and I don't want to let Corona, uh, God, Cortana help me get things done. I, I have such a hard time with that name, and I don't know why. Um, anyway, and believe it or not, we're done. We've set up Office, or excuse me, uh, Windows 10 Home completely off the system. I'm going to let this thing go all the way up, connect the Internet to it, and go back in. Uh, so give me just a second on that. All right, well, we've got the install done. We're booted into the new install for local use. And we're just going to look at some of the settings and things that we should probably double check. Uh, a couple things right off the bat. I'm going to pop in here and I'm going to go to settings. And let me make this a little bigger so we all can see it. There we go. And I'm going to want to go over here to privacy. That's where the majority of the privacy settings live. So change privacy on options. Uh, I do not want to let a website provide locally relevant information. I'll decide what's relevant. Uh, I don't want Windows to track AMP launches to improve uh, performance, and uh, I don't want them to show me suggested content. As far as speech activation, I want it off. Inking and typing, I'm going to turn this off because I don't need a personal dictionary here. It's up to you what you want to do, but this actually uh, stores information about uh, things that you type and things like that. So uh, I don't think it needs to do that. Diagnostics and feedback, I'm going to do only what's required because there's no way for me to really turn it off. But as far as this stuff goes, I can go down here and I can say how often it should send feedback. I'm going to say never. And I'm going to tell it to delete all diagnostic data. All right. Now, uh, let's see. Activity history. I don't need to store it. Let's go ahead and clear it. All right. Now, this is where we probably might part ways in a couple fashions here. Um, great example is this. Under uh, App Permissions Location, right now, I tell it not to. That was one of my selections. Camera. So, allow apps to access your camera. So, you can turn that on and then turn all of the apps off if you want. Um, usually, this is pretty good. I I don't need the Feedback Hub or Microsoft Edge to access it, but these are all your own personal things, uh, nor do I need the 3D viewer to access my camera. Um, and then other desktop apps, of course, uh, if I'm using this uh, for um, other apps, I should probably allow it, okay? Now, uh, that would be like, oh, I don't know, Zoom, things like that. Um, Let's uh, keep going here. Uh, voice activation. No. I don't have anything that's going to voice activate. I don't need a headset for default. And Corona should be, or Kurt, uh, Cartina, Cortina should be off. Let's see here. Now, of course, we've got notifications. I don't want apps to send me notifications. Or I might, depending on what you're doing. Let's see here. Contacts. I'm not using this with uh, mail or anything, but uh, I can. <coughs> so I may consider leaving that on. However, I'm not using local contacts, so I'll just shut it off. I'm not using a local calendar, so I'm just going to shut it off. Phone calls. <laughs> no, I don't want my app to make phone calls. Oh, and you may be wondering uh, what this actually is to change. Phone call access for this device. You can just shut it off here as well to get it completely off across the board. And that's, you know, that's the case with a lot of this stuff. This would just basically shut it off 
all the way across the board. Not allow it to turn on at all when it default installs, right? Um, we can, of course, do the same thing with a lot of this stuff. Um, a little bit more aggressive. All right. Other devices, radios, all this. You can go down. Automatic file downloads. Um, uh, you, typically, you're not going to allow that. Documents. Uh, allow access to the documents library in this device. And this is by different items. Um, yeah. I think the only thing that I need to allow for that, of course, is going to be Windows security. Anyway, let's see here. Video, allow apps to access my video library. Right now, that's probably good, except I don't, Xbox doesn't need it, right? All this stuff, go through, do what, uh, do what you think's right, as far as that goes for these settings. I encourage you to look through it and, uh, and just check it out. Anyway, that's the primary stuff. At this point, we're looking pretty good. I can go through all the stuff with you. Uh, you know, oh, we're going to uninstall all this extra stuff, and we're going to clean the menu up, and I want the taskbar to do a certain thing. But you know what? That's kind of a personal thing, and I'll let you uh, manage that as you see fit. Anyway, hope you enjoyed the video. Um, both these installs were fun to do, and I hope you got something out of it. This is Stu, AG6AG. Well, that's the whole shooting match. I hope I didn't leave you with more questions than answers. And I've got to apologize to Cortana. I cannot remember and pronounce her name the same way twice any time I talk about her. Uh, that said, that's probably why I don't use her. With that, hey, if you haven't, go down and click the subscribe button for me. And give me a like, too, if this video helps you. Uh, with that, 73 to all of you from AG6AG. Hope to hear you on the air.